Hi everyone, welcome to ByteVigor. Today, we're going to break down Depth First Search, or DFS, in the simplest way possible. DFS is a fundamental algorithm for searching and traversing data structures, and it comes up all the time in coding interviews. If you've ever worked with binary trees, like traversing them or finding their height, you've already encountered DFS in action. Imagine you're in a maze, surrounded by high walls, with only a few open paths. Your goal is to find the exit. What's your plan? A natural instinct is to pick a direction and keep moving forward. When you reach a fork, choose a path, say, always turning right, and continue. If you hit a dead end, backtrack to the last fork and take a different route. Repeat this process, and eventually, you'll find your way out. This is the essence of depth-first search. Put simply, go as deep as you can, then backtrack and explore other options. To better understand DFS, let's take a binary tree as an example. There are three types of depth-first traversals, pre-order, in-order, and post-order. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a Python implementation of pre-order traversal using recursion. The logic is simple. First, visit the root node. Then, recursively traverse the left subtree, followed by the right subtree. This recursive approach naturally follows a depth-first strategy, allowing us to explore the entire tree step by step. Now, let's walk through an example using the binary tree on the right side of the screen. We start at the root node, A. From there, we move into the left subtree, visiting B, then D. Since D has no children, we backtrack to B. B also has no right child, so we backtrack again to A. Next, we explore the right subtree, visiting C. Moving into C's left subtree, we visit E, then G. Since G has no children, we backtrack to E and then visit its right child, H. H has no children either, so we backtrack to C and finally visit its right child, F. At this point, we've visited every node in the tree. If you trace the path, you'll clearly see the depth-first pattern in action. DFS relies on a stack to manage the traversal process. In a recursive approach, we don't explicitly use a stack, but the system's call stack takes care of it behind the scenes. That's why recursive code looks so clean and simple. Languages that support recursion handle these details for us automatically. But DFS can also be implemented iteratively by using an explicit stack. On the left side of the screen, you'll see an iterative implementation of pre-order traversal using a stack. Now, let's walk through the process using the binary tree on the right. We begin by pushing the root node, A, onto the stack. Then, we enter a loop where we pop the top node from the stack and visit it. After visiting A, we push its right child, C, onto the stack first, followed by its left child, B. The order in which we push nodes is crucial. Since a stack follows a last-in, first-out, L-I-F-O order, pushing the right child first ensures that when we pop, we visit the left child first. This preserves the correct pre-order traversal sequence. We continue this process by popping B, visiting it, and then pushing its left child, D. Next, we pop D, visit it, and since D has no children, we move on. Then, we pop C, visit it, and push its right child, F, followed by its left child, E. After that, we pop E, visit it, and push its right child, H, then its left child, G. We pop G, visit it, and move on. Then, we pop H, visit it, and move on. Finally, we pop F and visit it. At this point, the stack is empty and the traversal is complete. If you compare the order of visits, you'll see that the iterative method produces the same result as the recursive method. DFS isn't just used for binary trees, it also applies to multi-way trees and graphs. The maze example we discussed earlier is actually a form of graph traversal. Now, let's discuss the time and space complexity of DFS. For a binary tree, each node is visited once, so the time complexity is O n, where n is the number of nodes. The space complexity depends on the recursion depth, or stack size. In the worst case, it's O n, such as when the tree is skewed. However, for a balanced binary tree, the space complexity is O log n. DFS has many real-world applications. 
It's commonly used in graph connectivity checks, such as determining whether two nodes belong to the same connected component. It's also useful for pathfinding problems, like solving mazes or Sudoku puzzles. Additionally, it's widely used in combinatorial problems, such as generating valid parentheses, enumerating subsets, and solving the n-queens problem. That's all for today. I hope this explanation gave you a clear understanding of DFS. If you come across similar problems in coding interviews or real-world applications, I hope this lesson proves helpful. In the next video, we'll dive into breadth-first search, or BFS. See you next time.